Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. Let's all sing along with Alex. Hey everybody, how are you? I'm Alex Bennett and this is The Ramble uh, and it goes from now until uh, midnight. I say that all the time. Eastern, Eastern time in the United States of America goes until, uh, what is it, 9 o'clock out on the West Coast uh, and... Um, uh, ni hao to the people in China, and I think it's the same exact time, only it's the next day uh, as it is uh, right here, and it's about six minutes, seven minutes past uh, 10 o'clock, so ni hao. I know, I know how to say hello, and ch- that's all I got out of going to China was to be able to say ni hao. The rest of that language is so unrelentingly difficult to to uh, uh, do you know to, to comprehend and to speak that uh, uh, it's a language if I had time in my life I would learn just to say that I had learned it but I only I came away from China with five words two of which or three of which I've forgotten Ni hao say hello Ni hao um, well, Gunge Pak Choi means Happy New Year, but I knew that before I ever went to China. Let's see here. Booyah! That means get away from me. I, I don't know if it's a polite get away from me or a nasty get away from me, but it was a term they taught to me because whenever you would go to places like, uh, oh, I don't know, a Chinese temple or something, there'd be some guys trying to sell, like, you know, books about it or pestering you to buy some little tchotchke that they were selling, and you just wanted them to go away, so you learned to say, booyah, which meant, go away. And I, that was easy to remember, because booyah is kind of a word we use for things. It's a non-word that we use. Anyway, so I learned that, and I learned, oh, bing was the other word we learned. Uh, it's the word for ice. Uh, because you can't get ice in China. No, I'm serious about this. You can't get ice in China unless you ask for it. And then when you ask for it, they look at you like you're weird because the Chinese do not like ice with their food. They feel it is bad for them. It is, uh, and, it, and so they don't, they, don't, uh, they, don't, uh, they don't cotton to ice. All right, so you got to learn how to say bing. So I've just given you everything you need to know about going to China. The rest of the time, you won't understand a goddamn word of what they're saying because it just sounds like, it sounds like some kind of gibberish. But what amazes me is that if you think you're smart, there are literally two-year-old kids speaking Chinese. So if they can speak it, you certainly could learn it. Isn't it amazing when it's your native language, all that makes sense? Uh, now, uh, you know, there are languages that we have that I can speak kind of easily. Like we were watching uh, Berlin Babylon, which is a show on Netflix. And it's all in German, but y- you can kind of understand German because one time I told somebody, I understand German because it's silly English, you know. Uh, and and uh, if, you, if you listen closely, there's kind of, it, it, it starts making sense. Oddly enough, um, languages you can speak pretty easily. Spanish I picked up. If you if you if you're literally ensconced in a language, you're stuck in a place, and like like let's say you go to Spain and you start living in Spain, you're going to learn Spanish pretty fast, just because number one you need to, and secondly because it's it's not the most difficult language for us to learn because it is a uh, it's a, well, I don't know what they call it, uh, but it's a kind of language that you don't have to worry about, okay? Because it's a lot like, it has a little carry, Latin, it's kind of, a, all Latin-based languages are easier for us to learn. Also, when we speak it, it's easier for us to speak it. Uh, but you try to speak, uh, look at the Russian alphabet. I, we have a friend, her name is Natalia, she's uh, Jack's uh, girlfriend, and... Uh, a wonderful woman, 
and she's from from uh, uh, from from Russia. And I, I said to her, I, I I just don't even understand how you can read that shit, because it's like the Cyrillic alphabet, and it's like it's it just it, I I don't I don't see how you can read that. Okay, but you're born there, you learn to read it. Here's the thing, though. My father, years ago, let me turn on the, the fan up there. I think I need that tonight for some reason. It's a few degrees warmer in New York today. It was like 52. My father um, would, every month, you know, the bills would come in, and he would have to pay them, and he would have to figure out what the bills were, okay? And so he would sit there at the, we had a breakfast bar, uh, he would sit there at the breakfast bar uh, with all his numbers uh, uh, out there, and he's adding them up. And he's going, Eins, zwei, drei, vier, and he's speaking in German. He said that he added in his native language. And then I asked a lot of other people about their native language, and they say, yeah, they also uh, add in their native language. So I asked Natalia, do you, do you add in Russian? And she said, no, I add in, in English which I found kind of interesting because when you went to all that trouble to learn Russian, you may as well use it for something, you know? But I don't know how anybody speaks those languages, some of them. I mean, some of them are just absolutely um, uh, horrendously difficult. Uh, I could, but I could, I could learn I, French. Yeah, the trouble with French is the French are snobs. And if you don't speak it perfectly, they don't want to have anything to do with you. So why learn it at all? Okay. Now, on the other hand, Spanish. You go to Spain, you don't speak a word of Spanish. You're trying to find a store down the street. And you meet up with somebody and they don't speak English. They will spend a half hour with you trying to help you in spite of the fact that they don't speak English and you don't speak Spanish. I mean, you're doing sign language and all kinds, but they will take the time to help you out. The French, on the other hand, you could speak perfect French, but if you had like an accent, they pretend like they didn't understand you. They would do nothing to help you. Um, I remember once, uh, I, what, I, I took my ex-wife, Susan, to, to France, and she spoke perfect French. Her mother was French. She spoke perfect French, all right? She would go up to somebody and say something, and they would act like they didn't know what she was saying. Now, let me also add, and I don't know how you tell this, but everybody, when they speak a language that isn't their own, usually has an accent, and the reason they have an accent is that when you're growing up and you're learning an act, an, a, a language like English, like I'm speaking right now, you use your mouth in certain ways and your mouth is trained to form certain words, okay, and, and the way in which they're d done. Well, the same thing is true in Spanish and Russian and any of them. So that when you learn another language like English, you can't get rid of the way your mouth was trained and the way your mouth was, the muscles and everything were accustomed to the language you were using. So there is a problem with that, okay? Uh, and, I, and, and, and so people do have a problem uh, with accents. Well, she didn't have an accent. She had, they knew she wasn't French, but they couldn't figure out where she was from because there was no discernible accent that she was using, okay? All right, does it make sense so far? They would act like they didn't know what she was saying. And believe me, she spoke fluent French. Her mother was French. So she learned it in her house. She spoke fluent French, but she had, she didn't have an accent. She had maybe a lack of an accent or something. And, and they, would, they would pretend like, eh, we do not know where, what you're trying to say. You're not pronouncing the word perfectly, you know. So I never wanted to learn French. I never had a desire to learn it because once you learn how to speak French, you got to deal with the French. And I, I really don't want to. So fuck them and their lousy language. And by the way, they should bathe more often. I'm saying that out of experience, all right? Because we went to the Olympics, uh, the Winter Olympics in Alberville. 
and we rented a car and we rented it from an uh, from like Hertz, right? And we go to pick up the car and the woman takes us to the car and we're standing between her and she's French. Uh, even though we were by, getting the car in Switzerland, she was French and she had an odor that to this day I gag when I think about it. And we were just all kind of like trying to stay as far away from her as was humanly possible. So the French don't bathe as often as, as they should. In fact, during the, uh, and I, I don't, don't call me racist or uh, anti-Franco or whatever, a Francophobe. Uh, don't call me a Francophobe because um, during the uh, Revolutionary War, uh, not the Revolutionary War, the, you know, the, the war they had in France where they beheaded people and all of that and stormed the Bastille and, and all that. Okay, uh, 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 during the French Revolution, um, the, the aristocracy didn't bathe. They never bathed. It is a known fact they never bathe. That's why you always see movies where they're putting powder on and they, they put immense amounts of powder. They would use, they, rather than take a bath, rather than just jump into the closest stream, they would like powder themselves and, and, and try and cover the smell of not bathing. So don't give me a bad time when I say the French don't take baths, okay? I know, I know. I'm going to get some kind of crap for that. But that's, it's not true. So anyway, that, that was what happened with the French. And, uh, but the, uh, the Spanish, on the other hand, just wonderful people. And they bathe too, which is nice. They like their water. They like the, the Mediterranean. They take a dip in it every now and then. And they keep themselves clean. Um, the Italians are okay when you're traveling. They're, they're kind of fun. The great thing about Italy... The greatest thing I can say about Italy is the food. The food, you could go, you know, and I proved this to girlfriend the last time we, we went to Italy. I, I don't know if she'd ever been to Italy before, but I said, when we go traveling, let's stop at like a restaurant besides, beside the highway. I want to show you something. And so we did. We were driving down, and all of a sudden there was this uh, restaurant. It was right in the middle of the highway. It was an arch over the highway, and on the arch was the restaurant. So basically, this is, and they had gas stations and everything there. So it was kind of a gas station restaurant. Okay, and you're going to say, okay, what kind of fucking food are you going to get at a gas station restaurant? We, we go to a gas station restaurant here, and we're lucky if they even have food. They probably have a vending machine that puts out three-day-old sandwiches or something. We ate there, and it was unbelievable. Great pasta, prosciutto. I mean, it was, and I told her, see, I told you, you eat at a gas station, and it's good here. Now wait till we get to, you know, wherever we were going. Um, you want to taste some great food, we'll go to a real restaurant. But, I mean, this is as bad as it's going to get. And it was terrific, you know. So I, and I always remember the first time I ever went to a gas station in Italy, and, and I decided, oh, I love prosciutto. Let me try some of this prosciutto. It's probably like dog prosciutto or something. And I had it. It was just, I was dying. It was so good because prosciutto is my favorite meat of the meats, okay? Anyway, you're probably wondering what I'm wearing tonight. Uh, and, and to people who live in New York, they know what this is, Right? Ready? You know what this is. Am I right? Let's all say it together. This is a WMCA good guy sweatshirt. And it looks brand new, doesn't it? And that's because it really is. Uh, it's not that new. I had somebody... This was... Let me explain the, the good guy t-shirt uh, sweatshirt to you. Today I was... I did an interview with uh, 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 one of our regulars on the program. Uh, and... Uh, you know, uh, he was from, he's from New York, you know, Stephen Pearl. And Stephen said to me, uh, it's, it's already talked to me about Cousin Brucey and things like that. And this is a disc jockey in New York. And then we talked about WMCA. It'll probably be on next week. So I'm not going to bore you with the stuff we talked about there. Now I'll bore you with it then. But uh, I'm, I was going through looking for a sweatshirt to wear tonight. 
and uh, I saw these in the bottom of the bottom of the you know cab uh, cabinet where we keep all the the sweatshirts. And this was given to me by somebody who had them made up. These are knockoffs. This is not an original. It looks just like an original. I think if there's anybody out there who remembers the WMCA Good Guy sweatshirt, you remember this, right? It looks for real. This is exactly how it looked. In fact, this face here was what, what I would say was the precursor to the smiley face. There wasn't a smiley face emoticon at that time, but uh, this was uh, this was the was the logo for the radio station and as WMCA good guys. Now, here's the thing about good guys sweatshirt. There were a million of them, literally a million of them in total. What I was told, none of them could you buy. It was the greatest radio station giveaway of all time. They gave these things away. You had to win them. You had to go to some place where they were doing something to get one. They were not, you couldn't buy a good guy's sweatshirt. So if you had a good guy's sweatshirt, you were pretty cool. And uh, I had one that I used uh, when I went there. I was the last, I, I have a distinction. I was the last good guy. Yeah, the good guys were, you know, all the disc jockeys. It was like uh, WMCA good guys, you know, uh, Jack Spector, uh, um, Dan Daniel, Frankie, uh, uh, Frankie, uh, uh, what was it? I said it earlier today. See, I mean, that's what's happening with my mind now. But anyway, all the good guys, all right, and Alex Bennett. And the thing was that I had not, they, they did away with the good guys. And I joined the radio station, and the station was half talk, half half uh, music, and you know rock and roll and stuff like that. I know that sounds like a lousy format, but if you think about it, it's kind of logical. Uh, what they did is that from one o two what was ten o'clock at night to ten o'clock in the morning they were talk, and then from ten o'clock in the morning until ten o'clock at night they were music, and that kind of makes sense because you know well, you do talk overnight and then they did a morning show that was talk and then they started running music programming and the idea was not the worst idea in the world but it didn't last very long the only thing that lasted was myself a guy by the name of leon lewis and the rest of it i think went music again uh, but they kept us doing our little talk shows they liked me because i was young and so I was kind of compatible with the music because I was hip to the music. In fact, I did a music show on Saturday nights as well. Uh, so what happened was they decided that they had done away with the good guys, that with that whole thing, and that that maybe was a bad idea and they were going to go back to the good guys. And so they reinstituted the good guys. And of all the people that were there, the only guy who had never been a good guy in the past was me. So I, that's why I take claim to being the last WMCA good guy. And I can remember doing the promo now. They sat me in a studio and I said, Hi, this is good guy Alex Bennett. It doesn't even sound right when I say it now, right? Because, you know, my persona never was as a, as a good guy. Hey, I'm the good guy Alex Bennett. No, I was, I was not, the, not a good guy. Uh, and I said to them, this, I can't read this because it, it goes against my personality. You know, I have this rough-hewn edge, and I'm not, I'm not like all the other guys who go, Hi, it's WMCA. You know, it's me, Alex. Hey, it's WMCA, motherfuckers. You know. And uh, I said to him, I can't say that. So we sat there, and we thought about it, and we scratched uh, what was my beard at that time, which went... I, I, I couldn't grow anything in this area here, so the beer, it, my, I had, uh, uh, you know, uh, sideburns, and then I had this, kind of what I have now, only uh, it it kind of went up to here, okay? It was very weird. Anyway, I, I had a beer, and I'm sitting there scratching, and I'm going, well, I got it. And, and the way I did the promos, I said, hi, I'm Alex Bennett. Some people call me a good guy, and that worked. So I was the last good guy, and they, they have the T-shirts. 
the sweatshirts. These aren't T-shirts. They never wore T-shirts. They were sweatshirts. I mean, really, sweatshirts, a million of them given away. Oh, this is over a period of maybe 12, 15 years, but everybody wanted one of these t sweatshirts. And they gave me one, and what it was was a special edition good guy sweatshirt, which was made for the disc jockeys. And the reason it was special for them is right here, I guess it was right here, there was a zipper, okay? It's kind of sewn into it and kind of hidden so it didn't, didn't look uh, uh, overly, you know, ov overly zippered. And the zipper went here right? So that you could undo the zipper and then bring the sweatshirt up over your head and not mess your hair. Because in those days, all these guys were wearing like many hair products in their hair. And some of them like uh, Jack Spector, uh, who was losing his and kind of was trying to fool everybody by weaving it around his head. You know, he didn't want that thing moving. He sprayed it like crazy. So it, we had special shirts that we could take off without mussing our hair. It, to anybody who knew the WMCA good guys and knows what I'm talking about, they know what I'm, what I'm talking about. Let me see, what is everybody saying? Live chat, let me go to live chat so that I see what everybody's saying. So anyway, that's, uh, that's me and the WMCA good guys uh, sweatshirt. I don't like this. It looks cool. It is so cool. And your girlfriend said it tonight. She said, boy, that is a beautiful color. And it really was. It kind of is, if anybody remembers the good guys, uh, it was a very special color. It is, it's kind of orangey, but it's a yellow orange. And it's, uh, it's really nice. So that was my, uh, that's my story, and I'm, I'm sticking to it. Uh, I got a couple of stories here, but we can get to these when we talk to our citizen panel. Let me just tell you a few other little notes. Uh, we had a problem last night in that when you go to uh, youtube.com forward slash Bolo Bennett, Bolo being my nickname, Bolo Bennett, B-O-L-O-B-E-N-N-E-T-T, -E -T, forward slash live, you get a page which you can make a tab in your browser or you can add to your favorites in your browser or whatever and that whenever this show is going on the air all you have to do is just click on that page and when we start doing the show the um, uh, the uh, the uh, screen will start putting the show on like it's on right now I have it here uh, on that particular page the Bolo Bennett forward slash live page I have it here on another thing I've got I can even go, uh, and I, I wish I could show you, but I, have, I haven't got room to show you. I guess I could move it over. If you go, if you ever have trouble getting it, just go to gabnet.net, and at gabnet.net we have the uh, the uh, uh, the live video as well. Okay. Last night I posted a video on uh, Facebook after the show was over, and usually I get out of 70, 80 people. Last night we only had like 25 or something like that. I don't know what happened. But anyway, so we, we had problems last night if some people were trying to get on, but we don't have any problem now. So, uh, you know, if you're listening to us on audio, come on over and watch the video, you know. But what happened was, I, and I've got, I've, see, I've got to hand it to YouTube. I um, took my uh, my message, uh, my uh, my excuse me. I took my problem and I wrote it in a message to YouTube. And had a little, I, you have to always search for how to contact these people for something. But anyway, I contacted them and I told them what my problem was and that the, you know the, that wasn't coming up. That all I was getting was a blank screen. And I figured that would come to naught, and we'd probably have to, for days, give you other ways to get to the picture. There are other ways of doing it. You can go to YouTube and just type in Alex Bennett, and it will take you to a page where the live video is accessible. Uh, but it, nevertheless, I wrote them, and I figured, ah, it's going to take forever. And it'll get back to me. I'll get some kind of, like, you know, robo-mail saying, well, thank you. Uh, we'll put you in our queue, and we'll figure out what your problem is in a few years. 
somehow within an hour or two, it was back up again. So I think somebody at YouTube read this and said, oh, we got a problem out there. And they did a little diddling and they fixed. And all of a sudden, it, tonight, as you can see, if you go to that, uh, it's, uh, it's fine. It's terrific. So just wanted to let you know. Let me do something and turn on the Skype lines. As you know or don't know, if this is your first time ever watching the program or listening to the program, uh, we are uh, on um, um, a little thing called Skype. And Skype is how we take our calls here. Uh, we also, you can also use a phone number. Now, if you go to gabnet.net, that's gabnet.net, um, there's a whole tutorial on the right-hand side of the page telling you how to use Skype, how to get it, how to use it, how to call us. There's even a button you can push. You just uh, turn on your Skype, and you push that button, and it calls us, okay? Couldn't be simpler. And then you can be part of the citizen panel, which is more than one person at a time talking to the host, which is kind of an unusual thing in this business. Anyway, so we're waiting for our first callers to call tonight. Uh, uh, Phil is not calling tonight or tomorrow night, so it's Phil Free Nights. So feel free to call. Uh, and our, uh, we have a, uh, by the way, at gabnet.net, at the bottom of the page, yes, the bottom of the page, wait, you go down to the bottom of the page, there's actually a phone number if you want to use that phone number to call us. And yes, it's easy to find, unlike contact numbers for various companies that you try to contact all the time. You can't contact anybody anymore. Uh, and if you do, you ha have you ever, ever tried to contact Microsoft or Skype, which is owned by Microsoft? Impossible. I don't know of any number you can call you know, they have a chat thing. You can chat with somebody, but I hate chatting with somebody. I want to just be able to talk to somebody in real time and tell them what the problem is and say, how the hell do I fix it? And I have them say, go here or go there, but we don't ever get that. So what the hell? Anyway, so we're waiting for somebody to call just so I don't feel alone. Uh, who knows? Uh, mm. I'll just drink my coffee. Let me tell you a few stories while I'm waiting for people to call. I know you're out there because we got a lot of uh, got a lot of viewers right now. It looks good. Yeah, it's looking good. It's looking fine. Oh, oh, there we go. Rick Horn. Wow. Who is? Oh, hello, hello, Rick. How are you? Hey, good, Alex. How are you? Where are you calling from? Do you have a, a camera there? Oh, hold on, having some technical difficulties. There we go. Yeah. Uh, turn on your camera. Camera's not on? Okay. Oh, there we go. You got me now? Yeah, but you got to turn down. No, I haven't got your picture. Oh, the other thing. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You good now? No. Son of a gun. You ever see a picture of a camera there? Uh, let's see. Little there is the circle. I have the sound. I have the microphone, headphones. Where's the camera? It isn't there. Oh, how's that? There we go. It's going. Oh, there yeah. we go. Now I can put your picture on the. You called us before, haven't you? I recognize. Yeah, it's been it's been a while. Uh, been 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 crazy, but yeah, for a while I was calling on a pretty regular basis. Yeah, and so why did you stop? Ah, there's the question. Because we got boring. Actually, it was nothing you did. <laughs> nothing we did. We didn't get boring or anything no, like not that. Not at all. What well, happened was my job had become so insane that I I, I just I was conking out every night. I had a territory manager who got cancer, and I was covering the entire I, Northeast. I seem to remember that. You said, yes. you, and you were starting to cover all the Northeast. And I, I've just been going insane. I have a new guy working that's great. and uh, So now you have I more. Miss, I miss you guys. So you, so have, do you, have, more, you have more free time now. I a little bit. A little bit. It's time to breathe. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, it's nice, it's nice to have a job in this day and age. Yeah, that I'm not worried about. Uh, it, 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 especially as you get older, you know. You're right about like that. Like, how, how old are you? I'm 64. And the company loves you, right? They do. Yeah, because, uh, you know, some companies don't mind age and other companies do. I'm not sure that they, they mind, but it's I, I've got a lot of knowledge. I've been with them for 24 years. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, but, kind of, but sort of a relic. But what I find though is that some companies want young people because they don't have to pay them as much as the old guys. Very true. I've seen that a lot in my industry. And, yeah. Uh, now your industry you know, is what again? Since I'm in the 
the woodworking industry. We do. I'm the. Uh, we manufacture high end uh, cabinet hardware, hinges, drawer slides, and some other, you know, functional hardware. I'd like to say that's exciting work, but. But the, some of the stuff is actually kind of fun when I when I have to tell guys how to do certain things. Oh, uh, really? Like shove it up their ass? Well, I, <laughs> believe me, I'd love to say that to an awful lot of people. <laughs> and the only reason I won't the day I leave is because I don't want them to have a bad taste in their mouths about the company. So they, and by the way, we need more callers, folks, just in case you just you got the idea that what the show's about is people calling us. Uh, and they will, I'm sure. Um, uh, you know, Alex, you touched on something earlier that's close to my heart, and that's yeah. prosciutto. Prosciutto. I work, for, I, I work for an Italian company, so I've been over there quite a few times. Oh. Am, I, am I right about the gas stations? Absolutely. The, yeah. the, on the, along yeah. the Autostrada, you, you just go up there. Not only are the meals good, but then they have like a deli inside yeah. that has... You know, you can get all your cold cuts, prosciutto di well, parma. I, well, I went, I went, I said to myself, oh, look, that prosciutto can't be that good. So I took the prosciutto. It was like, you know, it was one of these these things where you walk along and you pick the stuff out of the thing on a plate, right? It, it was a serve yourself, right? Right. And I, and I, so I've got the prosciutto. And I went, oh, fuck, I got to go back and get more of this. Yeah. It was just that good. It's the real deal. It's you know, they didn't, even, they, they didn't you even serve it with with the melon or anything. They didn't give a shit about melon. Right. It, it right. was good enough. They just went. This is it. This is good. And then so then I went. Well, it, they they got to fail at some point here. So I went and got the tiramisu. Ah, and you haven't was, had tiramisu till you've had it over it there. It was amazing. Now I've got to tell you that was the worst meal I had in Italy. <laughs> Okay. Right, right. I understand. Because <laughs> then you go to another restaurant, and I went to one restaurant uh, in uh, we were at Lake uh, Maggiore. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. We were, was it Maggiore? We, we were no, that's, we were. That's we were, Lake Maggiore. We were at Lake Cuomo. That's where we were. Oh, Lake Cuomo. Okay, I was there on my honeymoon. Yeah, uh, I went up there to spend time with uh, George Clooney. George, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, um, uh, it, I remember going to this one restaurant. Where it was, I think it was like pre-fee. They just said it's so much and that's it. And you sit down. They brought us one dish after another, after another. And each one was better than the one before it. Right. And, but, and, and now we're getting filled up to here, right? But it's not, boy, it was, it was some mighty good, mighty good eating. Great food. I, I've spent up to five hours having dinner in a place yes. and, and the best part is the wine because there are no added sulfites on the wines over there so you don't get a headache yeah. we, we, i've put away incredible amounts of wine and never woken up with a hangover yeah instead. yeah well there, here comes our friend rob oh. alfano there we go meet rick horn uh rob. Hey, rob, how are you? good to see you again likewise yeah long time how's your wife doing Teresa's doing fine yeah Good. Yeah. 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 You know, it's so long ago. I hate, you know, I, I do remember you, but it, it's oh, yeah. like I forgot to remember you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's got to be two and a half years. It's got to be about two. Yeah. Two, two and a half years is about right. I, I got one chance one night. I called in. You yep. know what part of the problem is? If we start discussing politics, I get myself so wound up that by the time I sign off, I'm, I'm all wired and ready to go, and I can't fall asleep for another hour or two. Now, your wife used to call, too. Yeah, yeah when I would be and home. Sometime, and but sometimes you were on the road, and she'd call, too, and then the both right. of you were on with each other, even Separately, though. Separately, right, right. I'm still always on the road. In fact, I'm calling from a hotel right now. I'm just north of the city. <laughs> how? Uh, you should have just come down here and done it from here. Uh, how, do you, how, do you, how do you keep? Uh, your marriage is a very successful marriage. Yes. You know? That's, you, that's the secret. <laughs> oh, oh, oh uh, well, uh, that's true. That's true because uh, I, I figured, uh, I think I may have mentioned it to you, that you may have been married for how many years now? Uh, well, it's, it's four years now. Four years. Okay. But it's more like you've been married for like 30 days. Because exactly. you're so, out all your way. You're always glad to see me when I get home on it's Friday a, nights. It's <laughs> like the old song goes, how can I miss you if you won't go away? You know. That, Oh, uh, oh! who did a great version of that? Um, oh, jeez. I, I Dan even, Hicks and his hot licks. Yeah, I think so. Somebody like that. <laughs> you yeah. were a regular on the public house, too. Yes, yes. Albert's show. Yeah. Albert, yeah, yeah. 
I have no idea where Albert is right now. Really? I think he's living in Florida. Oh, so you got rid of, you got out of Queens. Well, I think so. I, and I wrote his Facebook page and say anything. I'm going to write an email to him and see where he is because, huh? He's not a Facebook guy. Well, no, he, he became a Facebook guy. And then there was really? a picture of his wife on her page walking down through a neighborhood in, in Florida. So, uh, 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 we're, we, but I don't know where he is right now. Well, and we, he we, was talking about that. Florida was something he wanted to do. Well, we had lunch a while back, you know, and then we said, well, let's not wait any more. Let's do this every three months or so on. And of course, we never called each other. And uh, now, uh, now uh, three quarters of a year has gone by, and somebody told me they think he moved to Florida. Could be. Because he, he did inherit a house down there when his mother died. Uh, and, uh, but you know, I had lunch with him and, you know, he was, he was happy not being in radio. Yeah. That's what he said. We were doing some Skype sessions, like a whole bunch of us. He would send out a note saying, Hey, I'm going to be on Skype just to say hello. Uh, that maybe two or three times after he left the public house. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I had lunch with him one day in the city and he's the one that took me to Italy. Ah, oh really? Place. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Italy is uh, is amazing. In case people don't know what we're talking about, it's a, the world's biggest Italian food supermarket. It's got to be. They make about seventy million dollars a year out of that place, and uh, it's, it's a good. huge place. Well, I can't go. You see, I'm still dieting because I'm having a hard time during the winter. Not, n keeping it off. I mean, I'm keeping it off, but it's harder during the winter than any other time. But when I suddenly find that I've lost a bit of weight, I run down to Italy and we get the uh, we get the um, uh, the ravioli, and I get the little tiny ones, which I love, and then we get the regular size ones, and we just we feast on it for two days, you know. But now she can't even eat that because she here here's what's happened with my wife. Okay. Not only was it boring enough with me being on a diet, right? <laughs> but she, uh, in fact, since you saw me the last time, Rick, I've lost something like 55, 60 pounds. Really? I, I, yeah, yeah. Wow. See? But I wish anyway, I could say that. Yeah. But anyway, uh, uh, so it was enough that boring enough that I was on a diet, but then all of a sudden she's been having these allergies and she scratches like crazy. And then she has these hypodermic needles so she has to shoot up this stuff to keep her from itching, right? And I said, you know, you're on your way to being a very good junkie. You know, yeah. she, she's got, we got, we, we have all the needles you need here, you know, and uh, she knows how to shoot up, boom. She does it in a second. She just no no she doesn't even think about it. I think these needles go in by just touching your skin slightly. You know? She had a Wartenberg wheel just so she can scratch herself with it. Just yeah. roll it up and down. Yeah, but anyway, so uh, but so now her she's still itching. So her uh, allergist said, "Well, we've got to do something about this. I want you to go on this very strict diet." And this is a diet that's so strict, I think water is, isn't on it, okay? I mean, it's just terrible. And uh, so she pretty much has to have what I have. She has to have, she can have chicken, she can have meat, but she can't have any fruits. She, she can't drink coffee. That kills her in the morning, you know. And they say, you do that for three weeks and see if the itching stops. And if it stops, then we'll start adding stuff back in and we'll find out what the hell it is. Whatever happened to the shit test? You remember the test they used to give you on your arm, and then they just waited for one of them to yeah. raise? And yeah, they still do that. Didn't they do, didn't they do like a, a scratch test first? Yeah, that's yeah, right. I, test? I had one done on my upper shoulder maybe about six years ago, um, yeah. and you know they do like this thing, and they test you for all kinds of stuff. Right. And I lit up like a Christmas tree. You're not going to believe yeah. this one. Years ago, my wife at the time, Ronnie, was itching and scratching and really had a bad allergy of some sort. So she went to an allergist, and they did all kinds of tests. And you know what the result was? She was allergic to me. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding you. She was allergic to me. Nice. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, it was... Uh, I have found that with this very restrictive diet I'm on, you know, yeah. we're eating very few things, and it's chicken, and it's steak, and it's a lot of cabbage, right? Mm-hmm. 
all of my itching went away. Things that I thought was, um, oh, it's February and it's, you know, the house is dry and the weather's dry and my skin is all dry and I'm itching and scratching like crazy. It's all gone. I don't have any more itching anymore. I have so many allergies to so many things that it, now that I'm eating like this, I don't have stomach issues anymore. I don't have scratching anymore. It's the problem is I miss everything I used to eat. I, I had an issue for years growing up with eczema on my feet. And it had finally gotten so bad, I finally got in to see one particular dermatologist. Yeah. And as soon as he looked at my feet, he said, this is an allergy. And I was like, oh, thank God. I've been saying that. It turned out I was allergic. To, I think he called it rubber activators. It wasn't rubber, but like elastic. So anything like in your socks, um, your underwear, everything would start itching like crazy. So that was that's what it is. And then I was fine for 30 years. Last year, I developed eczema on my hands. I'm going insane. <laughs> wow. So, you know, I found that, too. When I was young, I had things, and then they went away, like when you hit your 20s. And then as you get older, like in your 50s, they, come they come back. start coming back. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what happens is you, you get uh, you, you, your allergies go away. Um, your allergies go away. Uh, because you 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 you've gotten a um, uh, uh, a, re a resistant you 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 know you've gotten immune to them to your allergies, and then uh, for some reason they come back sometimes when you're older. Like I find now, I'm you know I I have uh, a lot of my hay fever stuff that I uh, my what happened when I was a kid I I was allergic to. Uh, who is it? Uh, Tony keeps trying to call, and it just starts calling, and then it bails out. Oh well. Uh, so where was I? Oh yeah. So I I um, uh, uh, what was I talking about? I just lost my train of thought. Allergies and um, allergies. Yeah. We were talking about when you're in your twenties, you're not you're you know you build up a tolerance, and as you get older, they come back. Yeah. Yeah, so you 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 know you get a you get a tolerance, and but you can lose that tolerance, uh, you know, and and uh, I uh, all things. But oh, when I was a kid, this was it. I was allergic. They took me and they gave me the test with the with the, yeah. the scratch test, right? And I blew up like a stuck pig uh, with uh, dust, okay, mm -hmm. and and an animal fur, cat fur. So, so you know what my parents did? They, they never, got you a cat. They, they never dusted my room, and they got me a cat. Really? And I, and also they moved to the country. I was also allergic to acacia trees, so they moved to a home where there were acacia trees. And when they came into bloom, and the cat was uh, rubbing up against me, and the dust in the room was getting high as my navel, uh, and I was wheezing. I would wheeze and wheeze and wheeze, and all of a sudden one day. I stopped wheezing because what the doctor had said is there are several ways what we could do to prevent your kid from having problems. We can stop all these, you know, stop him from uh, doing all these things, or you can overexpose him to it and let him suffer until he gets rid of the allergies. And that's exactly that what happened. I got rid of them. So, you know. I'm allergic to cats terribly. I have two of them in the house. Yeah, I have two of them in the house, and they're both big furry. Yeah, cats. So what do you but, do about uh, that? Do you just wheeze? I, I don't feel it. I know I don't have a problem. I mean, they tested me for it. I had the cat at home. Yeah. They tested me, and then she said, "You're allergic to cats." And I said, "Yeah, I have one at home." She says, "So well, how do you live with it?" I said, "She, I could brush her. I can put her up to my face and kiss her. No problem." Right now, I have a second one. No okay. problem. So they don't bother me. But I'm allergic to it. The test showed I'm allergic. Yeah, but you I'm may not, have I had the same thing. I was allergic to everything under the sun. I've had dogs. I've had cats. No issues. Um, but Alex, you're right about the country. I remember reading about some studies that were done, and people who grew up in rural areas, particularly on farms, had a very low incidence of allergies versus people who grew up in the city in, yeah. in more sanitized conditions. Yeah, well, so, so you know, it's important, I think, that you don't coddle your kids 
when they get an allergy. Instead, you expose them to the very things they're allergic to. And unless it's something that maybe makes them go into anaphylactic shock. Right. Uh, well, like a peanut allergy or something like that. Yeah, well, you know, yeah, you can say, well, yeah, the peanuts killed him, but so could the flu. So what the Yeah, hell? but at least you get to practice <laughs> giving somebody a drink. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Patrick has joined us, and uh, and and uh, 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 Tony has joined us as well. And uh, how are you tonight, Patrick? Just Dandy. peachy. Dandy, yeah. Dandy, peachy. peachy, yeah, yeah. It's a, the same thing. Uh, so I, I just, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm amazed at uh, at the fact that my, so my wife is now eating practically i think she can eat navel lint i think that's what's on her diet you know and she's just suffering through it she goes i couldn't eat they had a big cake for somebody's birthday at work today and i couldn't eat it and you know and i and i'm supposed to go out to lunch with so and so but we can't figure out a restaurant i could go to where i can eat and, and I, I you know i just want to tell her because she's listening to the show right now that really what i did is you 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 go anywhere anybody else goes to eat and you simply order what you can order in other words don't let the world have to adapt to you you would you know you 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 can get along and people go well i'm on a diet i can't go somewhere because then i'll want to eat the cheesecake well don't eat the fucking cheesecake oh i like cheesecake it depends uh, you know if it's one i can like do it if it's what? If it's if it's one simple meal, I can do it. I, for example, my wife wants us to go back to New York for the weekend of Easter. Yeah. And I told her, I said, if we're on this diet, there's no way I can do that. Because, yeah, if we were just going over their house for dinner, that's fine. But we're going to live there from Saturday morning until we leave on Monday. And that house is loaded with stuff. And there's no way I can do breakfast, lunch, dinner, breakfast, lunch, dinner, breakfast. Right. And cheat. No way. Not in that house. Not with those gorgeous bagels and cream cheese for breakfast and all of the things that go along with being in that house. It's just no. Oh, we have a list here, Paul. You can be feeding you all the night upstairs and downstairs. Well, you can probably do the you can probably do the cream cheese. I got cream cheese in the refrigerator. I had it last night. You know, I just found I just found is my low cal treat now. My no low carb treat is uh, um, uh, macadamia nuts. You like those? Yeah, high fat, very high fat. Yeah, uh, but it doesn't matter. Uh, high, delicious. high fat doesn't matter. I eat steaks all the time. It's uh, high yeah. fat is not part of this diet. You know, yeah. I can eat as much high fat as I want to. The macadamia nuts have two net carbs per like handful of them, like a quarter of a cup. So you can eat a ton of those things. Now the thing I can't figure out. Here's what I found. Please tell me there's something wrong with this. But down at my store, there is this bread. And it's, it's like right next to the French bread. It's one of the big loaves, right? And they have two brands. One is, uh, and they're both from the same company, two styles. One is Italian bread, and one is kind of a, a Por Puerto Rican bread or a Portuguese bread or something. I don't know. Okay? And I look at the back, and I l always look at the carbohydrate count because I want to see what the carbs are. Hi, Jeff. I want to see what the carbs are. And the carb on this bread is three carbs per uh, per fifth of a loaf. In other words, there are five servings in it. There are only 15 carbs in the whole loaf of bread. And I keep I, I keep waiting for them to change the, the 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 labeling on it, and they never change the labeling on it. So I assume because they could get in trouble with the government, they got to be right. It's the Seinfeld episode, like the the, the like the, the yogurt. yogurt. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's gotta be fat. But I'll tell you, I eat it. I don't find it puts any weight on me. Really, I don't. It it. But it, uh, it, it. How can you have a bread that has that few carbs? Is there something, some way they make it that it's just not porous? It's not. They don't use flour or something. I don't know. The grains they use are something. Uh, yeah, something, and I wrote them, yeah. and I wanted to say, well, what what's in this stuff? You know, I mean, it, are the ingredients in there to tell you what kind of flour they use? Uh, no. Uh, I, uh, next time I get a loaf of it, which is about every other day, I'll I'll keep the packaging on it because it comes it comes in a 
plastic kind of cover that they put around it. And I think they do that because of the nature of the bread that it would get stale really fast. Is it local? Is it or is it's it? It's local. It's out brand. of New Jersey. It's out of New Jersey. Hmm. Yeah. So you know, I'm, I I I don't know. I is I'm. It I'm is it taste like Italian bread? It 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 tastes. It's it's kind of spongy. Well, okay. Right. It, it's spongy. But Portuguese bread has a little bit. Different, it's a different flavor, actually. It's got great texture. What? Um, I don't like spongy bread, though. Italians, we like crusty bread. Oh, well, I, 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 I like this. Listen, I, if I've got a Jones for bread, this takes care of it for me. But I, I just sit there and say, I can't believe this only has three carbs. So it is kind of like the Seinfeld episode where they, oh, this is non-fat right. yogurt. You know, and then they take it to a lab and it's got fat like crazy in it. But, you know... It, 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 tell me if I'm wrong, Jeff. Tell me if I'm wrong. If they put on a label, the carb count, they they can't lie about that, can they? They can. If they want to. Now, here's the thing, though, that I found out. If anybody's on a low-carb diet, I found this out. I've been going out and getting this, like, these, these Jell-O pudding cups that are sugar-free, right? And uh, what you do is you figure out not carbs, but net carbs. In other words, it's carbs minus the the fiber, fiber and yeah. minus the uh, the sugar alcohols. Well, for for Atkins, what they did is they they included the sugar alcohols at one hundred percent. So if you had uh, so if you have somebody has like, let's say it has twenty carbohydrates, but it has ten dietary fibers uh, fibers and uh, tw uh, twenty uh, and five uh, sugar grams of sugar. Hi, Brian. No. The the the, hey. the sum total of all of that is that you got five net carbs. So you get the net carb thing. Well, yeah. I read that the problem is is that Atkins that said, oh, you know, this only has so many net carbs, and they were right to a point, except for the fact that the sugar alcohols, oh. certain sugar alcohols, you can take them all off. Other sugar alcohols, if they don't list them, you can't take off. And the reason you can't, you can only take off half of them because half of them do metabolize in your system. So stuff that says oh, only one, I saw a candy bar, it said one net carb. And I went, I'm, I bought 24 of the goddamn things. I sent away to, uh, uh, to, to uh, uh, what do you call it? Amazon to get them. And then I suddenly realized it said something like, 16 sugar alcohol. Well, that isn't one net carb. You have to take away this. If you have 16 sugar alcohols, it's eight you can take away from the carbs, and then you can take away the dietary fiber. 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 It's a Jewish guy. Uh, and, and, and then it. You, what you've got left is about 10 net carbs. But they were using the Atkins form of net carbs in which you take care of the sugar alcohol completely. And then you don't want to eat too many of them because sugar alcohols make you get the trots. So, you know. Is that like that stuff, sorbitol? Sorbitol and so on. Yeah, there's, there is stuff that it said that it, if it's used as a substitute for sugar is fine, is terrific, because it, it, it is metabolized entirely by your system. But things like sorbitol and their... Mylitol or myla is something or nothing or something like that. That is is one of those sugar alcohols that you only can take half of them off. So, anyway, you know that's the kind of life I've been living. Exciting, exciting. But I lost fifty five pounds, and that's all that matters. And uh, I'm at thirty six. You've lost thirty six pounds so far. Since Thanksgiving. Yeah. Wow. And and how fast do you are you dropping slower? You're probably dropping slower now. Right? Well, so it's been since Thanksgiving, right? Yeah, so it's it's not a bad mm. clip. No, I, you know I quit it on a Thanksgiving. I think or I started on Thanksgiving. I mean, I started on Thanksgiving. I mean, yeah, uh, when I started, and people go, "Why do you do that?" Well, I say, "Well, you know, you go to, you go to a Thanksgiving dinner on a low carb diet. Just don't eat the stuffing. Oh, eat yeah, eat as much turkey as you want. Eat the skin. Uh, you know, be a glutton for that turkey. Not a carb to be had in that. Mm -hmm. You know, so." I learned how to work my way around. I found. I also found found diet uh, uh, diet um, uh, double chocolate uh, soda. 
Hmm. Is I it like. good? So, yeah, it's very good. You know what I did? Sometimes I take the ice cream and put it in a cup and I put milk in ice, the vanilla chocolate. Oh, yeah, ice. that's great for a low-carb diet. Well, just a little bit. I had it last well, night. I mean, much. When I get pissed off, I do that. Yeah, uh, you're, you're not a fat guy. I remember you. You're, you're a skinny guy. Yeah, still pretty good, I guess. You're still pretty good. How old are you now, Tony? 48. Oh, you got time to get fat. <laughs> I look forward you to You got it. time. It'll happen. I, want to be, I do want to eat a Big Mac again. When I was a kid, when I was up until I was about 28, I was like skinny as a rail. I was like almost too skinny. I was like the, you know. In your young pictures, Alex, you was, were tall and uh, thin. Uh, you really, I mean, I was really thin, though. I mean, I never went over, I think, 100, you 140 or pounds or something. And then I moved to Houston. And all of a sudden, one day, I couldn't get in my pants anymore. And I got on a scale, and I was up to 180. And that's the first time I ever saw a giant weight gain on my part. That's not mm. much, though, so, either, because you're almost six feet tall. What do you mean that's not much? I'm like 180. <laughs> today, I was 100, almost 188 today. Okay. Which is pretty good. But, you know, I went from 140 up to, yeah, that's I, a lot, yeah. all of a sudden I get tubby. And then at that point, I started being realizing that I kind of had to watch out for myself. But anyway, enough of that. By the way, I heard your comments on the French. And you're, yes. you're not being racist. I <laughs> worked at a company in New York City. And uh, the parent company is a French company you might have heard of called Thompson. And they own Technicolor. Yeah, And the Technicolor used to come and f for all of the board of directors to get together in one place, for some reason, they would choose our conference room in New York on, as we were in uh, Times Square. Yeah, And so every quarter, all of these French people would fly in from all over the world and I would have to take care of them. You know, I can't get my computer on the network or, you know. Yeah. And... When you'd walk up next to them, they reeked. These wealthy people. Every one of them. Wow. I mean, you just, it was nasty. And you're all around this big, 20 people out around this conference table. And you're like, geez, these people don't take showers. They're, I mean, they're wealthy people. They're well-dressed. Reek. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I get where you're coming from. And so that's not I, so, racist. So, it is a fact. Well, I I, I don't think so. I, can you be racist against a uh, 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 like the French? Is that being racist or is that being like a francophobe? I'm not neither. I mean, they were you know, I didn't mind the people. It's just uh, you know. Anybody else here have any uh, any thing to do with the French? I mean, not that there's any reason to. Uh, mm. Yeah. Well, one of our guys is married to a French woman, and I have to say, she smelled fine to me. Oh, okay, okay. Well, you know, she is probably she American, like uh... no, no, she she is from France. She's, oh. she's French, yeah, but... you know, but she's been here for you know quite a few years at this point. Well, you see, uh, probably if she didn't bathe, her, her, she wouldn't have been able to get an American husband. I mean, I'm I'm thinking to myself, these people are flying; they're getting on airplanes, yeah. and to be stuck next to one of them. I mean, it, it, you didn't have to go out of your way to smell it. Yeah. Well, so. you don't want to get next to uh, Hasidic Jews late oh, in the week. Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> you also don't want to get next to the Amish, <laughs> you know, when it gets later in the week. I, I was at a wood curtain show, and I had one guy come over, and he lifts his arm like this, and I almost passed out. <laughs> really? Really? I'm guessing the only way that woman would ever find an American husband would be if the American husband was into eating flavored or rancid clam. <laughs> hey, some guys like funk, you know. Yes, yes. Patrick. It gets funky, yeah. Yes, Patrick. Uh, playing off of what Rick just said, I went on a flight this was maybe 20 years ago, and the gentleman next to me was obese to say the least yeah. and he had a, an odor but it wasn't bad it was you know just enough and he <laughs> decided to put his arm up on top of the seat next to me mm -hmm. and his armpit was wet and I just about threw up in the <laughs> little soup bag because it was so horrendous that I 
I had to ask him to put his arm down only because uh, the way that your arm is sitting on the back of my seat, it, it, I, I don't know, I made up some excuse, but holy shit, that was, that was <laughs> rancid shit, and that was a flight from Milwaukee to Orlando, nonstop, so, oh. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Forbin well, says you never you, stand too close to a beached whale. You Frenchist <laughs> son of a bit b. Uh, but Frenchist would they be a Frenchist? Uh, I don't know. Did I, you hear about that uh, radio station in uh, San Francisco who fired uh, that uh, sports guy for making comments about that seventeen-year-old skier? No. Kim, what's her name? Uh, yeah. You he mean, just, he they, said, I'm a big fan. She's, you know, she's 17. She's really hot. And he said all these things and uh, the, the radio station in San Francisco fired him. He was, he didn't even say it on their radio station. He said it on Sirius XM. Why is it? Do, does he do a show on Sirius XM? Yeah, he does. A, a, there, it's called the bar stool or the bar, whatever, something like that. I think it's called the bar stool. It's so it's a, it's one of those gas gossipy kind of guy shows where you're supposed to sit around and talk like the guys, right? Yeah. So he was talking like the guy, saying, "Hey, that that chick is hot," you know, and all this. And his radio station that he does a regular show heard it, about that, and they fired him. <laughs> there should be a law against firing people for something they say in some other venue. You know, it, 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 it's, it's none of your fucking business if he does it on some other venue. Yes, Brian. I completely agree with you. I even go f probably go further than that, probably very far left, quote unquote, in terms of uh, what I perceive to be workers' rights in the workplace. But what you're saying may entail the overturning of uh, corporate personhood. The overturning of corporate personhood? There was a Supreme Court, there was a Supreme Court ruling that uh, dictated that. Corporations are people. Oh, yes, that was that was that was back, I think in nine, in maybe nineteen eighteen. I mean, it was a long time yeah. ago. And and this some, is a consequence of that. Somebody said it was very, very um, uh, good work on the part of a lawyer, who who yeah. managed to convince the Supreme Court that a corporation could be a person. And he yet, probably had his tongue like uh, Richard, what's his name, Gene Simmons. He probably had a tongue like that up the corporations' yeah. assholes so well, much that uh, you know he was yeah. so talented. <laughs> well, it, it certainly, it certainly was creative Fork, thinking. Uh, it was creative thinking on his part. Yeah. But what was what, what what's worse about it is, yeah, they want to be treated as a person until. You want to sue them or do something like that, and then they yell, oh, we're a corporation. You can't well, come if, after us. I mean, If they're people, they're bullies on the block. Well, if they're people the and they do something wrong, how can you throw them in jail? You can't throw them. You can't throw a corporation in jail. So that was interesting. I didn't know that, that it was by some creatively uh, forked tongue lawyer. I can't, well, I like I can't even remember I, what the case was. I'm sure if we had a lawyer here who knew his business, he could tell us what the case I was. Could, if I could go back in time with Mr. Peabody's Wayback Machine, I'd yeah. love to see him get creatively fucked up the ass. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and while he's at it, take Trump with him. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll go back in time and see his father like and blow his brains out. Uh, oh, uh, 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 Tyson's uh, – I can't read this because my – I'm not wearing my glasses. Uh, Tyson's Acosta – Said they fired disc jockey's name is Patrick Connor. Yeah. KNBR fired him for something he said on Sirius. Yeah, uh, you see, I mean that's the point. The, the, if you read that article, it'll 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 uh, it'll tell you what he said. It'll quote it, and I, it's not terrible. I mean, look, what are we going to do? Guys get together at a bar and they have conversations. So that's kind of what the sports show is. It's not one of these shows like uh, Mike and the Mad Dog or one of those shows where they're talking X's and O's. It's it's a it's a you know what are you gonna do? Just cancel all broadcasting? Like it's going Rob, too far. Yeah, well, Rob, I mean, here's the solution. Here's the hyperlogic solution according to these corporate cocksuckers. We have to become the Borg. Borg. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Patrick could get that reference of Momo. Yeah. 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 yeah, we need to become the board. We need to become a singular organism. Yeah, right. 
and well, suspend our in this and suspend our individuality and capacity for free thinking. Well, it bothers me. It bothers me as a broadcaster because I've always I've always said there should be a right of talk show hosts, and and here's the right that I ask for, is that you hire me to do a talk show for you. You want me to be controversial, so I get you an audience. Uh, you want me to get you an audience because then you can turn that audience into advertising dollars because the more audience I have, the more you can charge for your advertising. And then you fire me because I said something controversial? Yeah, you know, you, right. They, you should not have the right to fire somebody who you hired to be controversial because he got too controversial. Yes, Everybody's afraid, though, today. Yes, Patrick. Yeah, and, and that, that the thing is, now with the Me Too shit, yeah. uh, it, it really pushed that limit. And I wonder if that same podcaster would have been fired a year ago. Yeah, absolutely not. Hi to John I, Rockwell, by the way. I wanted to mention, because as Rob was saying, you know, guys get together and they talk like guys, and it isn't the... And women get together and talk like women, too. It isn't to the extent of pussy grabbing, but it just chit-chat. Well, BuzzFeed the other day oh, put out uh, 11 photographs. DC Nazis that they are. Uh, bulges in their pants where they got photographed of 11 of the top luge uh, guys. And it, it all their, their genitals bulging and it you know and there's there's the thing that i don't give a shit and is that now something that the women should be against because you know that that well let, let me let me let me let me mention this if i if i can when i was at the olympics in alberville and we were staying in the chalet we would sit there at night watching the olympics on the tv set just to watch the women skaters get a wedgie you right. know, and, and some of them, they, they would go, hey, this one's getting a great wedgie. Come here. Look at this. Watch this. And the, you know, it was going up more and more up her ass. And girlfriend the other night saying to me, does she have a camel toe? Yeah. And so don't even blame me. You know, all about the camel toe. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Women are capable of that. We just lost John Rockwell. Um, is it the feel free day today? Yeah, it is. It's, yeah. Don't you know this tomorrow? Don't you hear it? Don't you feel it in the air? Isn't it palpable? Yeah. It doesn't matter to me. I could care less either way. Yeah. I, I bash him to his face, and he just sits there with a shit-eating grin on his face. and take. I don't care. Either way. <laughs> I give not two fucks, yet alone one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but uh, 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 it, it does bother me that as a broadcaster that this guy lost his job because of something he said in another venue. You know, you've got and, to the point where you can't say things. Everything is taken literal. You yeah. can't say something. You know, if you make a joke, you got to be careful with jokes today. So you know, comedians will go out of you know out of favor in the next ten years if this keeps up. There won't be a comedian around unless you're telling knock knock jokes. It'll go underground, and hopefully we'll have a civil war, and we'll have an armed insurrection, I was, so we can prevent I, the Borgening from happening. I was watching a uh, I, every the night. Matrix. I record, and every night I try to watch, uh, oddly enough, old Dick Cavett shows because they're kind of amazing. They're kind of time capsules to begin with. He does a monologue, which is a time capsule, and then the people he has on are truly time capsules. I mean, he had interviews with some amazing people, and the other night he had Woody Allen on. And the no. jokes Woody Allen was making, if he made them now, it, oh, would, yeah. it would only justify what everybody, everybody. thinks about him. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it was, you know, it was, it was amazing. But the thing is, did you hear about this, that Amazon decided to part ways with Woody Allen? They're not going to really? do any more TV shows with him? Really? Because of the, because of the alleged impropriety. You know, I mean, uh, I, you know, it's the only time I in, in, agreed with the president, although his his say what he said was self-serving about the fact that, you know, these people are being um, uh, uh, made guilty before anybody ever proves it. It's just uh, uh, somebody makes an assertion and that's it. They're out the door. 
And what you're saying about KNBR would have never happened if this weren't going on in the background, this whole Me Too thing. Right. Because it is, it is uh, uh, broadcasters and organizations who are scared shitless, mm -hmm. you know, that they're going to get some kind of taint because somebody said something. Uh, hey, I'll say, I'll say it right station, now. I've, -E I've, I've, I've seen no? This station, WEEI, yeah. has suspended broadcast, live broadcasting from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. So the entire staff can attend sensitivity. Yes, I saw that. <laughs> and you know, and you know, they're only wow. doing, you, they're only doing Imagine that television yeah, station. Yeah, but you know why they're doing it for the it's, publicity. I was going to just say it's a publicity stunt. They don't give a shit about women. You know, they care about, hey, we're going to look good. We're, we're having, you it's look, I got news for you. You, you know, it's, so you, you excuse the guy who's on the air from being there at that moment. Okay. <laughs> I mean, come on. Yes, Patrick. It's a joke. Does everybody remember the biggest sport controversy in recent history was allowing a female reporter into the locker room? Yes. And, and oh, that, yeah. that was the, the big hubbub. And now you can't even, well, like, like Rob said, you can't even joke anymore. And I would think the sports world, both male and female, would be the place that a little bit of raucous humor would be allowed just because, you know, everybody is in the locker room or everybody I is don't. fighting or everybody is, you know, it, it just a, it's a different environment than a professional uh, work environment in an office. So you would think there would be a little bit more leeway in that versus where Rob worked, you know, or where I used to work, you yeah. know. Nobody knows how to act today. That's the problem. They, now, they, now they, let me, they, the, the companies don't yeah. know how to act and, and how to be yet. So everybody is so sensitive to everything that this kind of thing happens. Now, what I find interesting is, is that Sirius XM didn't get rid of them, and that's where the so-called thing took place. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but then again, they don't give a shit about anything. Uh, yes, Patrick. <laughs> uh, sorry to hoard this. It, it just reminded me of something. Uh, and I may have told this story on the air before. Mm -hmm. But um, when I was still working at my former employers, uh, a friend of mine and I, we've been working together. We both started together. And um, after I got paralyzed, we were still working together. And a new gal was hired, mm -hmm. and she was in an office right across from my friend. So my friend called me in her office for something, and we were just chit-chatting, and she said, hey, you want to have a little bit of fun? And I said, sure. And I never knew what was going to happen with her. So she started yelling at me loud enough that her to gal across the hall can hear, why the fuck aren't you walking? Why are you so goddamn lazy sitting in that chair? Get up. Quit being so lazy. And the gal across the hallway, she didn't say anything, but when I rolled what? out, she's kind of looking sheepishly at me. And I said, you know, that was a joke, right? And she didn't know what to do. <laughs> and this friend of mine and I, we were talking about a week ago, and we were reminiscing about some of the shit that we used to do there's no way in hell we'd be able to even joke about that now even though i'm the center of the joke it would be so insensitive and like rob said company don't know how to react or how to deal with things anymore so Patrick, yeah i was just gonna say how much you want to bet that that uh, that lady you're referring to that third party wanted so desperately she was you know her, her her pussy was wet to this to the sense that she wanted to be the busybody bitch that uh gossiped around it but i can't because he's in on the joke he is the center of the joke i wanted so much fuck her <laughs> her career but i can't and, and oh, she's I mean, got blue clip lips over it yeah Ooh. yeah he, 
Welcome back. It's good to see you, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> you really it, it's good to have you here, Brian. Yeah, let me let me read this for a second. Uh, I'll say it that. says Barstool co-host Patrick O'Connor uh, was uh, fired by KNBR Wednesday for making a series of suge sexually suggestive comments about 17-year-old Olympian uh, Chloe Kim. Hold on a second. Oh, there's Bree. Uh, calling from Dubai. Hello, Bree. How are you? Is he there? Hi, Bree. Hi, Bree. Are you there? There he is. Hello. Yes, oh, okay, here. good. Let me, let me just continue yeah. reading this. Patrick O'Connor called the American <coughs> snowboarder. Now, you can say this on Sirius XM, okay? Because I know. Cause you can I, say uh, shit and fuck on Sirius yeah, XM. I, you, you can say anything you goddamn please yeah. on Sirius XM. He referred to her as a hot piece of ass. Yeah. Um, after her gold medal win on Parker. Tuesday during a conversation on Barstool Radio's Sirius XM show dialed in with Dallas Braden. Uh, she's fine as hell, uh, Connor said on the program while speaking with a former NBL player, uh, Dallas Braden, and comedian Brody Stevens. If she was 18, you'd be ashamed to say she's a hot piece of ass and she is. She's adorable. I'm a huge Chloe Kim fan. Well, he wasn't. Exact. But she's 17, right? Huh? She's 17 years old. He didn't say he wanted to rape her. You no, know, he just said she was a hot piece of ass. Uh, it states, you know, West Virginia, age of consent is what, 16? Maybe 15? Yeah, but I, 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 I don't know if I would uh, call 16. her, uh, you know, a hot piece of ass, but. Uh, you know, he did. So. Take into account the show called Barstools. Men talking about sports and being a little bit irreverent. If that's right. not your thing, tune right. out. Right. But that's the name of the show. Sorry, Alex, I'm having get uh, Road Scholars sitting there talking yeah. about, uh, you know, theories of uh, whatever. Boy, Bree's having trouble getting in here tonight. Uh, uh, yes, Jeff, and then right. Patrick. Yeah, but, but the, the, the problem you. is not that the bar sh show was the problem it's that he has this other job and that which maybe his principal uh job didn't agree to this kind of stuff yeah but what was it, Say it on yeah, their airwaves but wait a minute in number one it wasn't said on was their perfect. airwaves and it, what business is it of theirs what this you get what i'm saying what this person says alex yes yes when please. you're it, when you're a public it, it's context person. what it's context. That's what he said. It's context. it's context. You know, Howard Stern gets away with saying a lot of things because he's established himself as that kind of a person. This guy doesn't have that kind of power. And also, she's an Olympian, you know, at the Olympics during the Olympics. You know, so if this was um, if this was a, you know, juvenile delinquent who had gotten arrested and it was a mug shot mm -hmm. and they said the same thing, nobody would care. Right. Well, I, I, I think that there's a, uh, you know, you have to consider the context again, and the context is Sirius XM, a show called Barstool, in which guys are s sitting around acting like really asshole guys. Like they're in a bar. Uh, do you think, for instance... Yeah, that's not where uh, the guy Patrick, got Patrick has his hand up. Yes, Patrick. The, the, the thing is, what he did, I've got... I've got a small issue with her being 17. However, the thing that he did is say out loud what I probably would be thinking in my head at home. And the thing is, I know enough not to say that even out in public. However, I don't think that's a, that's a fireable offense because it was at a different venue than his main job yeah. and his job if he said it on the air at his employer the main job yeah. then yes i could see them saying because of the way that things are now that you can't even look at somebody cross-eyed maybe he could be fired yeah. but because it was his other thing it was his, it wasn't his day it wasn't their job and if if sirius xm 
wasn't aggrieved enough about what he said to fire him, then th these KMBR shouldn't have. Yes, uh, 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 but John Rockwell has his hand up. And then you, yeah. Bree. I got sort of frozen out before, so. but I'm glad I'm back. Actually, you and I had a similar sort of thing with Midnight Blue. At one point, near the time before I left, you you had moved to WMCA, and they didn't want you on Midnight Blue all that much because they were much more... They didn't they didn't want to have that rep. So you had me doing like announcements and stuff because MCA didn't really want you to be the presence, even though you were the producer, you know? Yeah. And they yes. were like, Oh, we can't. I don't know. So you're like, John, why don't you do the, you know, the, the, the voiceover on this? Thing. Well, so that, I'm not, wait, wait, so wait, you wait, weren't wait, the wait, on wait, wait, Rob, camera. Rob presence. says he understands that. Understand and then we'll get that. to, we'll get that's, to you, Bree. What? That's coming out. That's coming out and saying straight up. This is not our image. At this radio station, this goes against what we consider our contract with you. This is not who you are on WMCA, and thus we would not like to see this happen. I get that. That's all fine, and that's good yeah. enough for me as an employer. If I were, they didn't employer, kick you off for that. I mean, right. right. They, yeah. They've told me we don't want you on a show like that. If you do, then you could leave here. That's fine. I don't I think they that. told me I couldn't do <laughs> Midnight Bands. Blue. I think they were just not happy with it, and so I tried to kind of minimize no, it my yeah, it presence. Wasn't as, it wasn't as bad as a you know, yeah. shit or get uh, off. Bree, the Bree, was, Bree was yelling for well, attention. Yeah, Alex, I think we're seeing a blurring mm. of the lines between a lot of different things, uh, you know, in terms of like personal communication that becomes – you know, mass communication and then satellite radio, you know, that it used to be you, you know, you could say things like that and nobody would really hear about it. You know, we used to, there was a, there's a thing in radio, I worked in college radio, you can say and do whatever you want as long as no one complains because no one would ever hear about it and they would never circulate it. But now with social media and whatnot, uh, you hear about these things. But, you know, one of the things I called in, I have it because it's kind of a joke that I don't know if you saw yesterday in the paper. Yeah. The latest Me Too person is Seal, the singer Seal, uh, mm -hmm. who was married to Heidi Klum, that, uh, uh, which, by the way, a, a woman I spoke German with on your show, Alex, when she was when you had her as a guest on Sirius XM. Did, so did I have I Heidi? I enjoy the day. But did I have, wait a minute. Did I, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Did I have Heidi Klum on my show? You did, of course you did, I because I, I talked to her. I don't remember that. <laughs> yeah, you had her. And I spoke German with her, and it was on your show. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, the funny thing is, it's it's his it's Seal's neighbor, and he had borrowed a salad spinner. And so he really <laughs> got to toss her salad. Yeah. Uh, wait, a, wait a minute, hold on a second, hold on a second. <laughs> is somebody actually going after Seal now? I had heard something yes. up to that. It was extent. a neighbor. She was Somebody coming back to pick up the salad spinner. spinner. And they and they had sex together? Well, it depends on who you believe. Oh, you mean he forced himself on her, supposedly. That's the, right. You didn't read that? Yeah, you know, I, I, you know I, I read something about it. But, you know, again... Uh, it, it, I, I, I agree that when women have made uh, assertions in the past, they've been dismissed, and that's wrong. But now men make an assertion that they didn't do any such thing, but they're dismissed. So what we've done is we've turned yeah. the whole thing around, and we've made it pendulum. unequal the other way. But it's Alex, a pendulum swing. Yeah. Finally, One extreme or the other. Finally, I'll just say this. I mean, it isn't... Literally every man could be accused of something. I'm just waiting. It's like, why Why do they come out? Like Mark Wahlberg, nobody said anything. Are you serious that Mark Wahlberg has been a, you know, a stand-up uh, guy throughout his life? I don't know. Maybe he is. But why, why did we hear about one guy but not another? Because you know these things occur all the time. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, I, I just wonder... Um, uh, you know, uh, why we have allowed the pendulum to swing so unjustly. Like, for instance, you know, the latest person to go, Jeffrey Tambor, got fired from Transparent. Yeah, I heard that. Now, he won huh. two Emmys for that show, and they got rid of him? He must have been pretty bad around the set, you know? Yeah. I mean, it, it says he's officially off the Amazon series, 
Uh, he says, while it's still unclear if the upcoming fifth season of the Emmy Award winning uh, show uh, will be its last, it's very clear that Tambor will not be part of the new season. Uh, they say Amazon recently concluded its investigation into multiple allegations of misconduct by Tambor and reportedly made the decision in the past week to part ways with the veteran actor. This, of course, comes after Tambor on September 19th said, I don't see how I can return to, uh, uh, to Transparent, citing the growing claims against him and the political, politicized atmosphere that seems to have afflicted our set. The actor and his reps uh, then tried to walk back the declaration after it was widely viewed as an exit from the series. Um, I think, uh, again, we don't know what happened there. You know, and we don't know why, but it's like every day there's another story about this person had to exit such and such a place, and this person had to exit such and such a place, uh, and and now of course Woody Allen has been dropped by Amazon, based upon assertions by his uh, former um, adopted daughter, or the adopted daughter of Mia Farrow, who goes around the world collecting kids like they're flotsam and jetsam. Uh, uh, she, uh, 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 he, 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 they, they did it based on those assertions in spite, of the, in spite of the fact that the New York Police Department investigated those claims a few years back and discounted them and said, we find no reason to believe these assertions are true. And yet they're firing him. I mean, isn't this getting out of hand? Is there not a little place for justice in this world? I mean, Trump said it in his rather self-serving uh, post the other day on, on Twitter. Uh, but he was right to, to that extent that, you know, uh, uh, there are women who are telling the truth. And there are women who are lying. And we have to somehow spend some time to ferret this all out and make sure that the wrong people aren't being hurt in these situations. But we have to believe the women, but we have to believe the men too. Everybody's opinion counts. Yes, Brian. Two things. One real quick. Uh, Phil said this before, and I don't always disagree with him, just like Patrick, of course. And uh, what he said regarding Trump is that even, even a stopped clock is right twice well, a day. I, I, I said and that's that. one of the statements that I agree with, that there is a lack of due process. And, and you're right, it's a self-serving statement, of course. Well, because, it, it, because then it was trying to, because it, it was done you know, to try and defend please. Rob Porter. It was done yeah. probably to defend himself. And by the way, why has, have, has nobody gone after Trump? He has like nine allegations against him. And he sits, the there, he, sits oh, there like, he sits there like the, Teflon. The oh, other thing yeah. I wanted to say real quick was well, no. uh, Alex. we want to embrace... Do pro we need to acknowledge and re-embrace and fully acknowledge uh, due process and what it entails yeah. in, in, in terms of how it's judiciously applied. But unfortunately, in the uh, pendulum swing extreme of the Me Too movement, what we have now is douche process. Douche process, <laughs> yes. Well, who, who wanted to say something here? There was somebody that was jumping in, and I don't. Uh, I think it was Bree. With Bree? Yeah, I had, I had something Alex, but then I got a, I got a message, and it threw me off. So I, sorry. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I, oh, oh, it's context. It's context. And when I was in political science class, uh, we had, uh, we used to learn of different eras or pr the way presidents could be labeled. And Jimmy Carter was called the imperiled presidency, and Ronald Reagan was called the imperial. Presidency. So I've come up. The new term is impervious, the impervious <laughs> presidency of Donald Trump. So this can be added to political science literature in the future. Yeah, uh, of course. Uh, all the uh, all uh, like a snowball rolling down a hill. All this stuff is starting to attach oh, itself, shit. and it may wind up being an avalanche before it's through. Uh, but I don't think so? Uh, huh? You, you think? He, I don't think so. I think. Uh, I think the Republicans are. Just going to try to hold on to him for everything they can. I don't know why. They have to. Is. Why? Wow. Because he, if, if they. If what they alternative is there? Him. Mike Pence? Well, all right. So, right. There's Mike Pence. But the right. what I'm trying Pitch to say is it's not like. It's not like says, oh, boy. They're I mean, not going to suddenly call up uh, Hillary to take the White House. It's going to be another Republican. I don't know why they are are afraid of this. 
Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, Patrick. Yeah, I know nobody on here like Mike Pence, but I will take Mike Pence over Trump for a couple of reasons. One, he at least looked like a human being. Two, he acted like a professional. And three, he can articulate his viewpoint, even if you don't agree with him. Mm -hmm. He at least fit the presidential mode and model. So if Trump were to get out of office, I'd be just fine with Pence. I'd have no respect for him because he's like complicit with everything going on. He's part Tom of Moroso. He's part of this uh, this whole thing that all they do is he sucks the president's dick all the time. The, it, I never heard another vice president or anybody talk about the president the way he does, like it's Kim Jong Un. Yes, but, uh, Amoroso uh, said, "Watch out for him." Yeah, Rick. And there he can't suck his dick. Rob. Yeah, Rick. Rick Horn. Yeah, I, I you know, I, I I find Pence detestable. Mm -hmm. I think the one difference, you know, and that's more for his beliefs. And, and Rob, you're right. He just basically just sucks Donald Trump's dick all day long. But um, he would at least, you know, actually, I think that the Republican Congress would get more accomplished with Pence in than they would with Trump in. Yes. Because he, because he actually knows what Congress does and how to get them to do things. <laughs> right. right. Like, because he, cause he worked there. <laughs> but dangerous. But dangerous. Right. He'd be more accomplished in getting the dildo shoved up our collective assholes than Trump is now. Exactly. <laughs> By the way, I want to wish everybody Gong Shi Fa Chai. Oh, yes. Oh, it, is the year, yeah. it, it is the year of the dog, by the way. Year of the dog. Right? I, I know, when I was born. And I know that oh, because, because my, wife, my wife works for the Chinese and they're taking the whole week off. Uh, <clears> yeah, throat> and, throat> not her, though. Uh, yes, Jeff. With our vice president. Does anybody really I'm think that more if he had to, what? to run Here an election, that he, that he would win? No. Would he no win? Charisma. Uh, no, he's got the charisma of a toad. Yeah, yeah. well. No yeah. charisma. I, see, so that's why I think they're never going to uh, support him. Yeah, they don't vote for Pence. Well, they vote for Trump. Yeah. You know, but they will if if they get rid of Trump, they'll the Republicans will be right behind Pence. You know, I said this before: the Republican Party is being held together by um, silly putty and bubble gum and uh, shrink wrap. That's it, and that's what Trump is. All Remember, three they all despised him. They all despised him. Yeah, uh, Ted Cruz, and they all dis they mostly well, despise uh, Ted look, Cruz, look, but uh, Ted uh, Cruz uh, went up there at the convention and said, I will not support President Trump. I will not support his nominee. I, I think course, there, I th th well, look, uh, on, uh, let's be honest about it, Rob. There is a reason why they detest him, and that is because he's not one of the club. So from that standpoint, we have to understand the dislike the Republicans have for him. Uh, that does not... Uh, diminish the dislike we all have for him but i'm saying that the republicans have a he's not one of the club they they didn't progressives like aren't part of the democratic club either which is why in their hubris they lost to trump they would probably wouldn't have lost to pence we would have had a president clinton but if we look back i don't think it, it would be it, the, the differences beneficially speaking yeah. i i would argue would have been if we, if we look pence. back on it how terrible how terrible a candidate was Hillary? Oh, horrendous! And had she become president, she would be completely mired down in in one one issue after another. That's particularly true. with the Republican Congress and Senate, they would have tied her up in knots. Yeah, yeah. they're going after now or after her now when she's sitting on the couch watching movies with potato right. chips. Imagine if she was in the White House. That, that's the shiny little object to, to keep you distracted. Yes, Patrick. Mm -hmm. Patrick. I, I would actually wait you to say that if Pence ran, he would have beaten Hillary. Because she, he has, even though he had the charisma of a toad, he at least has charisma. Uh, Hillary had nothing. And the thing that Hillary kept forgetting was like my state mm -hmm. and how many other states where you know uh that's in pa my state 
to take advantage of It's a purple state. I mean, we have a Republican governor, but there are a lot of Democrats here that voted for either Trump or you had Republicans like me that voted for Gary Johnson. But um, there was no, uh, there wasn't a solid base for any particular candidate, and Hillary certainly. Uh, she just threw that out the window, and I think if Pence would have been like Trump and come to Wisconsin in many He's times, like Trump though on his own, you know, I, I think Pence would have beaten her. The same uh, way that Trump. But, but Pence is whoa. What what Trump did was go out and whip up votes with nobody nobody ever ran for president like that doing these rallies like pep rallies getting raw it, red meat to the crowd. no they, they, more, not, pe- not not said pep, things not that he pe- couldn't do that he knew he couldn't do that were just so outlandish and so simplistic. What are they going to do now that there's a, he wants to put a 25%? I can't picture Mike Pence saying, I can shoot somebody out in the middle of uh, Fifth right. Avenue and nobody will, nobody will report or me. Or lock her up and things like that that just froth the crowd. I can't you know. hear Pence saying that in an just alternate see. dimension. Just don't see it. Well, plus Pence running, his record in Indiana would have been very easy to use against him. I mean, he did an incredible amount of damage to that oh. state. Um, yeah, you know, and he was not going to get uh, reelected as governor. Goodbye. So, what kind of chance did he stand as as, as president? Hillary. Hillary was just a, a very. How did we get off the Chloe Kim? Uh, thing? Was capable. Wait a, wait a minute. Her, wait a minute. her message yeah. was to average people. Okay, wait a minute. Uh, Bree said we're getting off the Chloe Kim thing. Yeah. yeah well, how, how did we get off of that? Because that was the interesting. I thought. Well, I guess maybe we already. <laughs> Well, we I, I, it up. I I don't know. I mean, I think we've, we're, we 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 very know, organic. The, this the, show. This, this, yeah, this show is very organic that way, <laughs> in which we're like a bunch <laughs> of guys sitting around, or and women when they call, sitting around uh, in a living room. We're not on. We're not on bar stools. Yeah. Well, no. So <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so let me ask you: Do you think Chloe Kim is a piece of ass? No. Uh, hey, hey, Alex. We yeah. we all get on. <laughs> here. We what? all get on here and we say things that are very controversial or yeah. way worse than what that radio guy said That's because we're human beings well, well hold on but we all well most of us do have full-time jobs if this was a more well-known would we be willing to if this were being more uh You're, like, are you saying uh, if anybody were listening to this is that well, what you're saying much, yeah. <laughs> if it wasn't <laughs> such narrow cast would we say those kinds of things with the fear of i know my company wouldn't like it yeah uh so, but you i'm know, a sole proprietor so i guess i'm first of all you don't mention it or not. You, very <laughs> i don't think uh except maybe on one occasion a long time ago you mentioned what company you work for so, yeah. so you're not here representing your company in any way. And the fact that you call and you have an opinion. I mean, I dislike it when I see people getting fired because of something they put in a tweet. You know, I mean, what, whatever happened to free speech for crying private out loud? Tweet. Yeah, yeah, private tweet. That's yes, right. Patrick. We're only... I, I do recall uh, many years ago, I called into one of the local um, radio shows in the morning on my way to work. Just, I, I had an opinion on, I forget what the topic was, doesn't matter. I got to work, and there were about five or six people that came up to me and said, hey, I heard you on the radio this morning. So I wonder, just what you said, Rob, is I wonder if today, with like this show, if this was on Sirius or local in Milwaukee, and... I'd be saying what I say here, or any of us. Yeah. If the same six people would have come up to me and said, "Heard you on the radio. HR wants to see you." <laughs> <laughs> we heard you on the radio. Well, it, it, so, uh, Tony uh, uh, Tyson like Costa writes uh, 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 an interesting uh, chat item here. He says, "Except for Alex Bennett, no one here is a public figure. Mm-hmm. So you guys aren't public figures." Uh, I hope not. <laughs> yeah, but we, we could become vortex public figures. Well, all I'm saying is if it wasn't enough to get uh, Sirius XM to fire this guy from that show, then KNBR should keep their fucking mouth shut. By the way, 
KMBR is owned by Cumulus, who is filing for bankruptcy. Okay, so uh, you know, take care of your own house before you try and clean everybody else's up. And that could have been a, a you know, who knows what kind of money he was earning uh, at Cumulus, and maybe it was a good reason for them to try to to get rid of the well, decision. Well, it could also be that he was he's happy to go because they weren't paying him very much at Cumulus. You sure. know, I mean, there's no money at Cumulus. There, right. it, and by the way, another company that's going bankrupt and may file for bankruptcy protection is iHeartRadio, oh, which is the largest broadcaster in America. Formerly yeah. Clear Channel, isn't it? Right. Formerly Clear Channel, yeah. You, you never heard of this going on in the old days because there were things that the FCC did to prevent this kind of action from taking oh, place. You had to talk about how Agit Pai is under investigation. Oh, is he on for what? For uh, I just saw it on my phone like earlier today uh, regarding uh, uh, wasn't I don't think it was I don't think it was Verizon it was something else that the FCC they have their own little internal uh, I uh, internal affairs outfit that they they they're, they're uh, investigating him for uh, corruption charges. But it just showed up. It showed up on my phone earlier this afternoon. Wow, wow! I'm not surprised. Oh, I'm See, not surprised. You're in trouble. <laughs> so what? Well, this guy took over the FCC. You know, the FCC. We've gotten away from what the FCC is supposed to be doing. Okay, uh, the FCC was created as an organization, as an ombudsman for you and I, because in the Federal Communications Act of what 1934. 34, right. 34. It starts off with one of the most right-wing statements ever in any kind of, uh, of, of document in the United States government. It says, the airwaves belong to the people. And so what the idea of the FCC was, was for them to kind of be an ombudsman for you and me. So that if we had a complaint, we would write the FCC and the FCC would check it out. But the FCC wasn't into censoring, taking stations off the air, denying licenses or doing anything like that. The only license that they denied up until about the 1980s or 1990s was a license of some radio station that was accused of financial impropriety. Okay. RKO General. Well, RKO the, General, about, they went out. WLIR. Yeah. But uh, then all of a sudden, they suddenly became this, oh, hey, every time you say a dirty word, it's $250,000 fine. Well, fuck you. That's not what your job is. Your jo they, <laughs> they were put together because you had, you had radio stations coming on the air, and because there was no control over those airwaves, they were like, if somebody was doing really well on a particular channel, they would just put in more power and right. blot, blot, blot out that channel. So right. the FCC Protection. came along to try and stop this traffic jam from happening. It was a technical organization more than anything else. It that's had right. nothing to do with, hey, that's not right to say on the radio. Fuck you. <laughs> that's not what you were created for. But to be fair, over the, you know, as broadcasting, as, as the morals change, society changes, Nobody would have ever thought back in the day you would ever say such words, maybe not even hell and damn. So as people got looser with their vocabulary, it maybe became necessary to that, you know, that they determined it was necessary to maybe start to, you know, move in that direction a little bit. I've got to tell you time and, and taste and, standards. And, and I've got to tell, I've got to tell you this, that as a broadcaster of long standing. There was a time in this business where if a four-letter word got on your radio show, you never worked anymore. One fucking four-letter word. Oh, excuse me. I just got fired. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, uh, it, you know, we would sit around and worry whenever something like that happened or somebody said, fuck, who called us, and then we didn't push the button fast enough in order to hit the segment seven-second delay. I mean... What childishness is that over a word? It's kind of like some kind of science fiction movie in which somebody lands on a planet where you can be executed for saying the word. You know, I mean, that's it, it's akin to that. Or 1984. Yeah, it's, oh. it, it, who cares if you say fuck or shit? The British don't care. 
it's but it's back to the same. It's like the discussion about abortion, right? It's the same thing. It's the never ending battle over words and what people think. Some people don't like you feel like you do. I feel the same. It yes. words. But why is it you can't say fuck on CBS in prime time, but you can on HBO? Because HBO is a pay service. Okay, let's back it off a little bit. Why is it you can say the word shit on TBS yeah. or TNT or FX? That's a blurred line to me. See, so and then how do you expect the networks to compete with people like TNT or HBO or whatever when they can't, you know, the, the playing field hasn't been leveled? Yeah, I agree. You know, and so yeah. that it seems silly that they go out of their way not to say those words. Yes, Jeff. Yeah, but does does the, the, all these different uh, uh, radio stations and and TV stations do they really get called on this stuff? Uh, yes. Just takes one complaint. When 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 when, uh, when, Jan when Janet Jackson had her tit exposed nationally. Every mm. station that carried that was ten tentatively fined, I think, $250,000. Well, technically, she had a pierced bra cup on. A pierced a bra cup? Yeah. Not a piercing that was on her, covering her nipple. I call that a pierced uh, bra cup. Whatever. Yeah, the, the point is, the that point was... is, how silly is that? A little mishap, okay? Yeah. And people are, are expected to pay 200, you know, it got down to the point where it is, it's 200, I think, is am I right, Rob, $250,000 a word? And if, it's, sure. and if it's on a syndicated know. show, it can be 250000 per station that, 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 that broadcasts that, that word. Now, what is a nipple? What would you mean, say, Rick? What, what, what's a nipple worth? Well, what, what does it cost? You know, because that's basically what happened. She, you know, you saw her nipple, big deal. Yeah. yeah, and it's how much her pussy would be. It's it's ridiculous to hold <laughs> a local affiliate liable for that. Those guys are home watching the Super Bowl. They're not uh, responsible for the, the the ABC or whoever the Fox who was ever broadcasting. Okay, if you want to find oh the reason you, you why they can't find them is because they don't own transmitters. Do you, so the FCC really doesn't have any control over the networks because they don't own the airwaves. They have to use the affiliates' airwaves. Patrick is next, but let me just bring up something mm -hmm. I always thought was silly. Remember when they used to talk about the family hour? And, mm -hmm. and they and they, if you were going to do something, you had to do it after like 9 o'clock because you didn't want mm -hmm. the kids watching? Hey, my father was a musician. He worked till 3 o'clock in the morning, so my mother had me up at midnight, right? So my father could see me. All right. How dare you tell us when we have to put our kids to bed? You know, there aren't going to be <laughs> kids watching at midnight. Dead. Bullshit. You know? Yes, Patrick. Uh, much like the Janet Jackson thing, and there's no control over what can happen. How about um, just in the last couple of years, the protests that have been covered by the news uh, organization? Where there's signs that say fuck and other things of that nature that just happen to show up in front of the cameras. I mean, that's not the network problem. Yeah. I mean, it's just live television. And then if you see a rebroadcast of it, it'll be blurred out. But, I mean, that just, it, it's silly. By the, yes, Rick. Yeah, uh, You know, th this kind of ties back into the, the, the discussion with the guy getting getting fired for, you know, commenting about about the 17-year-old Olympian. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's all, there's a small segment of a population that freaks out over this stuff. And everybody mm -hmm. is so hypersensitive that, you know, again, it's the same principle. Heaven forbid we offend somebody. You know what? TV, turn the dial. Don't watch it. That's end of story. Well, I also want to know why my tastes have to be dictated by a the fact that a nine-year-old might be watching. I'd like something for adults, okay? Right. And I Having think and I think parents supervise what they're watching if they don't want. I it think to the network them. should have the right to do yeah, it. Sure. John Rockwell. Well, that's okay. Actually, uh, actually, I was thinking uh, that uh, we had we had somebody else who was raising his hand first, and so you can do that. Well, you can do that. I'll well, be no, I'll no, be after no, him. No, you haven't said anything much tonight, so just go ahead and then. Well, I haven't. Okay. Well, 
you know, these are all the sort of of arguments that back in our we're, I'm going back to the to the midnight blue days, which uh, some of these guys may not know, but most of you do. That I worked with Alex back in those days when we were doing really off the wall stuff using words like fuck and shit on the public access channels. And and we all became just by default um, defenders of of, of 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 free speech and everything because somebody, somebody would say, oh, you know, you can't show that stuff that, you know, you can't show that stuff kids will watch. And like, this is back before you add, you, you know, recording video recorders were $800 and nobody had them. And then Midnight Blue was only on in some Manhattan, you know, places. And we're like, it's on at midnight. If your kids are up at midnight and they're watching this, it's your problem, <laughs> not our problem. Well, also, my point is, if we run it at 7 o'clock at night, mm. you're the parent. It's your responsibility to be a, yep. aware of what your kids are watching. It's well, not we could my, have done it's that, not but my, it's easier. Yeah. I mean, but we, you know, I think we, I think the idea of midnight was better anyway, just because then you don't have, you don't have to try to explain it. Well, the beginning of midnight blue, we at the beginning of at the beginning of midnight blue, we had a disclaimer that said, "Warning: <laughs> the following program contains adult material. If you buy, would be offended by such a thing, then turn the damn set. Turn off. the damn thing off." I said yeah. that too. Somebody else I had was, their hand up. Was it yeah, you, Rick? They wanted to say seven o'clock blue wouldn't have worked. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, Rick, did you want to say something? I thought. I, no, no, oh. I was just. Listening. I don't think it was me. I just said yeah, uh, yeah. I was just going to yeah. add to what I said earlier about the Janet Jackson thing. You know, for if, if a nipple's worth two hundred and fifty thousand dollars or whatever they were yeah. fined for, imagine what her pussy's worth. Yeah, exactly. But also, say exactly. imagine what her. I was going to say imagine what her asshole was worth, but then again, that would be worth nothing because yeah. I. Well, so, so in other words, I, we, we should all find I, out when I, Chloe Kim's birthday is, and when she turns 18, we can all talk about a piece of ass, okay? Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. uh, it, by the way, just before I go up, uh, see, my I love my shirt, my WMCA oh, good I love guy it too. shirt. You, you know the good guys, right? Uh, well, that's that's, that's, why, that's why, why I talked about you being on it, yeah. Yeah, and uh, you don't know what I'm talking about, do you, Tony? Yeah, well, I remember a picture you talked about, I know... When I, I collect Ramon's pictures, Joey had a shirt on when one of the pictures that had him come out of the store. Yeah, so I know about that. You, so you know about it, Bree, right? Yeah, I, I mean, yeah really because you guys competed against WABC, the All right. all Beatles right. channel. Yeah. W A Beatles C. Yeah. Well, yeah, but we always beat them. Murray the K, K Cousin we, Bruce. Yeah, but we always beat them. Uh, because, uh, no, because the, the, who was the fifth Beatle? It wasn't Murray. It was Murray the K, and Murray the K was on WMCA. Right. And I thought it was Billy Preston. Yeah. I was going to say Billy Preston. Anyway, hey, you know, we had a similar thing in Pittsburgh with KDK and KQV. Here's what I'm talking mm -hmm. about. It's kind of the same, like the 50,000 watt powerhouse versus the 5,000 watt, you know, yeah. local. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, all I'm saying is that, that uh, and we also all we got all the Beatles albums before anybody else. I don't know how we got them, but we always had them on a good week before anybody else had them. Uh, <laughs> in fact, they were they, they put out uh, "Let It Be," and we were the first people to have the album "Let It Be." And a week later, we had a copy of Abbey Road. And it wasn't going to be released for like five months or something. So, Alex, was there any connection between WMCA and MCA Records? No, none no. at all. MCA no. stood. Okay. You know what it stood for? Where the musical first, cemetery of America? No, no, no. Where the first, where the first station was, which was in the McAlpin Hotel. Yes, that's how they got their name. Uh, yes, thank you, Rob. I had an artist signed MCA. We called it Musical Cemetery yeah, of America. You're right. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, John. Thank you. Rick, please call more. We love you. We love you. If I were there, if I were there, if I were there, I'd blow you. Okay, that's how much we love you. Uh, 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 Patrick Blasick, thank you very much. And uh, by the way, he thinks that Chloe Kim is a piece of ass. And uh, Brian, and thank you. He's getting fired over that. And, of course, Bree, always good hearing from you from Dubai. Uh, and I think uh, everybody should wave Dubai uh, tonight to say goodbye to our audience. And thanks for being here, everybody. I really appreciate it. Wow, what a nice crowd. What a good audience we had. Terrific bunch of people, and uh, uh, including you listening out there. We appreciate that, too. 
Um, so uh, I, I do appreciate it. Uh, we've got a show coming up right after us. i got to hurry up and get off here. No, I have to hurry up and get off the air here. Uh, and, and the next show is, of course, uh, uh, The Intersection with Jack and Amy. That's followed at 1 o'clock Eastern Time by Connections from Florida. And then uh, at 9.30 tomorrow night, once again, if his computer works, uh, it's uh, going to be Damian Chaplin and The Exchange, followed by me at 10 o'clock tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye. Bye.